For almost 40 years, John Baptist de La Salle lived in union with the brothers in schools, whom he deeply loved and with whom he organized a network of schools with a new and efficient pedagogy. He was a man of prayer and self-discipline, who always found time to attend to his many commitments. Today, his life is still an invitation and a call for men and women who feel they have a vocation to live to the fully, the discipleship of Jesus in the context of a school. With the support of his first brothers, de la Salle tried out new strategies to improve classroom teaching. He perfected the method of simultaneous teaching, fostered orderliness in class, and supported the teachers in their many tasks in school. He made improvements in methods for the teaching of reading, writing, and arithmetic. He won the hearts of the children through his catechism and provided them with a Christian environment suited to their minds and level of cultural development. Above all, he gave meaning to the teacher's vocation as a witness to Christ through everyday work in school. His life was marked by many difficulties and crises. His educational initiatives earned him persecution from civil and ecclesiastical authorities. He responded to these problems through his faith. For example, in 1691 in Paris, in the midst of many difficulties, he pronounced a heroic vow in secret with brothers whom he trusted. Subsequently, as opposition grew all around, he made efforts to strengthen and support the faith of his brothers. He organized regular times of retreat and produced writings on pedagogy, spirituality, and catechetics, which are still works of reference for us today. He also went through periods of personal crisis. In them we can see the mystery of his life and give thanks to God for having given us de la Salle, a man committed entirely in himself to God and to his brothers. When he died, he left behind an institute with a charism, an educational project, and a vision of the future. In 1724, France gave the institute its letters patent, and it received approbation from the church through the Bull of Approbation, issued by Pope Benedict XIII in 1725. In this way, the brothers continued their educational activity during the 18th century in the midst of the discussions raised by the philosophers of the Enlightenment. However, the institute was suppressed in 1792 during the French Revolution as part of the social reaction which rejected the entire religious and monarchic past. In 1802, when Calm had returned to French society and the Napoleonic Restoration needed to reorganize education, the brothers were called on to take up again their work in the schools. Thus, it was that a mere 70 brothers resumed their educational activity at the beginning of the 19th century. Some brothers had been martyrs during the revolution, and among them we remember especially St. Solomon. During the 19th century, the Institute lived through the difficulties proper to the world of French politics, but the numbers of brothers increased enormously, and schools were established in more than 40 countries. The brothers concentrated on their schoolwork and tried to stay on the fringes of ideological conflicts, but the development of laicity in the political and social structures of France meant that they were involved in the discussion about education. Consequently, being aware of their Christian inheritance and faithful to the thinking of their founder, they developed a pedagogy which served as a model for the many religious institutes which came into being at that time in order to respond to the educational needs of children and young people. Since the end of the 19th century, the Institute of the Brothers of the Christian Schools has become established on the five continents and is testimony to the fact that the school is still a place for human development for all those who seek the truth and want to build a more fraternal world.